Welcome to the GQ Patrol Project. In today's episode, we are painting this thing. And by painting, I mean we basically spent a whole month in the shed sanding for a couple hours of painting. I'm definitely excited to show you guys the end result, but you will have to watch the whole video to find out. So I'll see you guys at the end. Hope you enjoy it. Drop a like if you do. And uh, yeah, let's get started on today's episode. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering, Diesel Conversions Australia, and in part by. I'll give you guys a quick little run through of where exactly we're sitting with this thing. So the engine bay is pretty much done. Now I did this uh, shaved engine bay. It's a little bit dusty at the moment, but it is done. So uh, we don't need to touch that at all, but the outside of the car is uh, what we're painting in this episode. Now we've got it down to basically the primer and the original paint. There's basically two reasons for that. If we left the acrylic on and then we sprayed our uh, new paint over the top, there was a good chance that the uh, chemicals in the new paint was gonna react with the old paint and cause like fish eyes and like little fuzzy bits here and there. So we decided to completely remove it down to something that's a lot more stable, which seems to be their primer and their primer is sanding really nice. So I'd say it's some sort of high build that's on there at the moment and we're quite happy to leave it at this stage. But you can see we are down to pretty much the primer and the original colors. This whole side was really quite bad. I assume that someone has had a crack at repairing this and they've layered the uh, crap out of this. So that's all sanded back. The back is almost done. You can see that there is the uh, paint that we are trying to remove. That's that acrylic based stuff. And then we've got a little bit left to do in uh, this section here, but this is what's happening to the paint as we're sanding it. It's gumming up and uh, it's not really playing the game. We've also still got to do the bonnet. We've rubbed that down a little bit, but we need to feather out the edge from where the clear coat was peeling. If you don't feather this edge out perfectly, it's going to show up through the uh, primer and through the paint. So we need to uh, continue work on that. Still a lot of sanding left to do, but we can see the uh, light at the end of the tunnel at the moment. We are getting very close. Hey dad, come in here. Come introduce yourself. You guys will have to meet me old man. Hi, I'm Peter. <laughs> this this is my son, Tom. Everything that he does is because of me. <laughs> so we've got probably another um, two, three hours of sanding. And then we can move on to masking, cleaning the shed, get the car outside, get it back in, get it painted. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's do it. I bought a second mask so that we can both start sanding because previously I only had one. It gives me the shit one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty good. <laughs> now, I know it's bad for the aircon to be on with all this dust, but it's really hot today, hey? Oh, I think we're going to have to have the aircon on today. Then I'll clean the filter out for the 40th time since I've had the aircon. With Dad on the power sander and me taking the hard to reach areas by hand, we are slowly getting rid of this previous paint job. If the car had not been painted previously, this process would be quite quick. Sand out the imperfections, scuff the original paint and you're ready for high build. But this acrylic paint all has to go. With the amount that we have done off camera and the little bit that's left, I figured we'd have this done in a few hours. But nine hours later and we are still not even close to being done. I found a way to get a horn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's done except for the roof. The door jams have taken so long. I've been doing them by hand, but um, they are pretty much done except for this one. The roof is three quarters of the way done. Dad's also gone ahead and um, finished sanding off every bit of acrylic. Still a, uh, probably a full day of sanding tomorrow. I really thought that we would get a lot further than we did today, but it just takes so friggin' long to even do what we've done. We haven't, literally haven't stopped, eh? We had lunch and that's it. So we're out of time today, but we'll come back in tomorrow and uh, continue on with the sanding. What do you want to do tomorrow? Uh, I want to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll uh, start job rolls tomorrow. I think I'll take the bonnet and the roof and then Dad can start 240 in the whole car down. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I might go buy another sander so we can both get into it. I've been hand sanding all day, my mm. fingers are numb. But yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow where we'll keep sanding. All right, it is the next morning. We are back in the shed, it's about nine o'clock. We're gonna start with the sanding. That's the only thing that we can do. So dad is gonna go around with the machine. He's actually gonna start on the bonnet because that still needs to be hit with 120. Then uh, he's gonna go right through the whole car with the 240, smooth everything off, get it ready for the paint. And uh, that's it. We 
It's actually crazy to think how many hours have gone into just removing this paint. If this was ever to happen to me again, I'd most likely send it off for sandblasting. That way you'd get a bare metal cab back and you can build it up from there. We've gone through over 200 sanding pads and one sander, as well as getting some complaints from the neighbors. At this point, we are both completely spent, but I wanted to say cheers to my old man for helping out. I honestly would not have been able to do this without him. He's 73 years old and he is still keeping up with me. While we're at it, I decided to bog up that rear quarter. That way we can get all of that sanded back as well, inching us closer to the finish line. Now we have finally finished removing all of that paint and we are down to the primer and smoothed off with 240 grit sandpaper. So we've sanded back the whole car, we're finally done. It is the end of the day. Actually, what time is it? It's 5.50. That's, what do we start at? Nine. What's that? It's a lot of hours. Six o'clock. We started at nine. Quick math is... <laughs> We're so worn out. 10, 11, 12, <laughs> two, three, four, five. Um, we're gonna go inside. I'll be back next weekend to paint this. Dad won't be here because he's going to bloody Tasmania. Um, but yeah, hopefully next weekend we can finally move on from sanding. I know it's been a little bit boring. We haven't filmed too much because we've just been going flat out, eh? Oh. Haven't stopped, literally. So one thing about Tom, you don't take any shortcuts yeah. with your workmanship. Well, you can't, because then it backfires. Yeah, well, some people do, don't they? And that's what happened. I told him everything that he knows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually good to do it with Dad. Gives us something to um, not talk about. We haven't spoken the whole day. <laughs> I used to have black hair. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Have a hog off. Thanks for helping. It's Appreciate fine. it. It's been my pleasure. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Don't go anywhere. All right, it is now the next weekend, and guess what? This weekend, we are finally painting this patrol. Now, massive uh, thank you to my old man, Pete, for coming and helping me with this car. I really honestly think I would have given up if it wasn't for him, or I would have just bought all new panels for the car, which is thousands of dollars at the moment. People are charging drug money for these old GQs. But uh, yeah, we need to basically get this car painted. Now I'll give you guys a quick run around of what we've done. We were pretty buggered last weekend, so it didn't really show you too much. So basically everything is 240 down. You can see we got all the panels super, super flat. Now that is kind of thanks to the primer that's already on there. So we did block everything already uh, just with 240, but yeah, you can see everything is looking really good. Inside of all the door jams is what got hand sanded. Uh, all of the kick panels and stuff like that is all hand sanded as well. So everything is pretty much right to go. All the back's done. We took these uh, little pad things off here. We've also taken the flares off. I stayed back after work last night, sanded the flares at work. So we're gonna go get them out of the GU so we can paint them today as well. We are going color coded flares. The shed is pretty much cleaned. Um, um, it's still really dirty, but I still do need to block the whole car. So haven't gone ahead and cleaned up too much of the shed, but we are ready to mask. So let's get the uh, masking paper. It's not paper, it's plastic. So we'll get the masking plastic out, start masking up the car. Then we can finally start the paint. It has been 10 full days of bloody shit to get to this point. So let's do it. Boys, we are getting very close. We've got this thing cling wrapped up. Now, I've gone ahead, wiped everything down with wax and grease remover. That is a very necessary step. You need to get all the uh, dirty fingerprints off. And once you've wiped it down, do not touch it with your grubby hands. Put some gloves on if you need to shut a door or anything like that. The product I will be spraying on first is a primer high filler. Now, there is heaps of different options with uh, primers. You can do 1K, you can do 2K. This is my first time spraying 2K because we are putting a 2K paint on top. So it is best to go 2K underneath something really hard for something hard to sit on. That sounded a little bit dirty. So we'll spray it on, we'll block it back, get it super flat. Well, as flat as we can get it anyway. The flatter the better. That way when our color goes on, it's gonna sit super smooth and super glossy. So yeah, there's not really too much more to say about uh, what we're doing today, but we do need to get this on. So I'm gonna start mixing it up I have gone ahead and uh, started using these filters now. I never used to use these and the paint gun clogs up like crazy. So definitely use them. I'm gonna be using gloves this time as well, but uh, we'll mix this up, get this car one color. This is gonna look awesome with the primer on. I'm really excited to see it. After this is sprayed, I'll probably let this sit for a day before we come back in and start sanding it just to let everything harden up. 
Uh, but yeah, it is finally time to get the paint gun out and spray this friggin' Nissan Patrol. Shake it, baby! You gotta shake this real good. Right, now this is a two to one product, which means we need to go to the two to one, number five, number five, and I'm gonna thin it out at 10%. So we'll fill this thing up probably a few times. The uh, trick with these is to sight through the inside and then discard them when they are empty. If anyone knows a trick on how to pour these type of thinners out without making a huge mess, let me know, because I can't friggin' do it to save my life. We are finally getting some paint on this car. It's been so long, so let's get stuck into it. The game plan here is to firstly spray the areas that may not see full coverage later. This means around the edges of every panel, the areas that are down to metal and inside of the door jams. I think it's a good idea to do this as typically these areas see less paint and then when sanding back they rub through exposing the metal again. Once these areas are done I'm going to be moving on to the roof and working my way down the car. Starting with a medium dry coat is better as it has less chance to run. Then when you go to the second coat you can lay it down super thick and it'll stick to that previous coat. The goal is to add millimetres of paint so we can block it all back super flat and get the best finish with our colour. Right, it has been quite some time since I uh, had the camera last and that is because painting absolutely sucks and it takes friggin' ages to do. But anyway, we are making some good progress and we are almost ready to paint, believe it or not. But in the last clip, you seen me paint, you seen me put the primer down, but um, I had to basically sand the whole car again twice. So yeah, that was fun. What I've had to do is I've had to block the car down. So if you don't know what blocking is, this is a sanding block. I've got a few different sorts of them, but this is just one that's literally right there. Basically, you've got to put the sandpaper in the block and uh, that's what blocking is. Then you go through, sand the whole car down with the block and it makes the panels super flat, which is why we put the high build on so then we can block it black. black. Now I started with 400 grit sandpaper, that knocked the top off it quite quickly. Then I moved on to 600 and just smoothed it out. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the roof is still at 400 because I'm being a little bit lazy, but the other bits of the car, they're at 600 and they're nice and flat. Now, one thing that is really good is uh, this thing. Now, it's actually a barbecue cleaner that I had laying around the shed, but when you are blocking and using really thin sandpaper, let's say this sandpaper here, it clogs up the sandpaper, you get the barbecue scraper, do that one, it unclogs the sandpaper and you keep going. I only figured this out about halfway through this event and it saved a lot of friggin' time. Now, a quick little walkthrough. You can see the panels are nice and painted. It is really nice to see this car finally have some uh, real paint on it that's not kind of flaking off. But anyway, you can see the panels are like super flat. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but that is that 600 grit sandpaper. Like I can't even see one little nick or scratch in these panels at all. Although I know when we paint it, it's probably gonna show up a lot more imperfections that I just cannot see at the moment. But you know, that is just painting and the car's not gonna be perfect. Not saying it's gonna be anywhere close to perfect, but I'm trying to get it as close to perfect as I can. I also went ahead and uh, re-bogged up this corner. When I painted it with the primer, I had that edge really round and it just didn't look right. So I've gone ahead and re-bogged that and you can see, kind of shaped it up so it looks a little bit more factory. So yeah, I've spent a lot of extra time just going through this thing, just making sure that everything is uh, as flat as I can possibly get it. But anyway, we are almost just about ready to paint. Now, the next step is going to be remasking. I just took the masking paper off because it was full of dust. And uh, as I'm painting, I don't want that dust floating around the shed. So all I gotta do is just go around and like remask up the door jams. We'll then wipe it down one more time with wax and grease remover, wearing gloves and not touching any of the panels. Then we can get the paint out. I can show you guys the color finally. And uh, man, I'm really nervous because I hope it looks good. It's like one of those things I've put so much time into that if I stuff it up now, it is gonna be a nightmare and I'm probably just gonna end the channel right there. The other thing I'm really nervous about is uh, whether this color is gonna look good because you can only really go into the paint shop and like pick through little samples that are tiny. You can take them out in the sun, but you know, it's really hard to tell if that is gonna be a nice color on the car. But what I can say is that the color that I've picked is very different. Um, and yeah, it's not really a color that I typically would have picked. I probably would have gone like a really dark gray. So spoilers out, it's not dark gray. 
But uh, yeah, you'll have to wait and see. Let me get this masked up. I'm not gonna film that because it's really boring once again, but I'll get this thing masked up. Then we can um, start thinking about getting the paint out here and mixing it up. And yeah, fingers freaking crossed that uh, this turns out really nice. EQ is finally all masked up. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe everything down with wax and grease remover. All right, it is now the next day. That's right, another day has gone by, but uh, it is time to finally start mixing up some paint. This here is the color that I'm going, so it's quite a nice like burgundy wine glassy red. Has a bit of a velvet undertone, so you can see the purples coming through here, but it's quite a nice color. Now, there is already a gold metallic in there, but because it's such a dark color and it's only a single stage, it's kind of swallowing up that gold pearl, so you can't really see it. I'm gonna start mixing some stuff up. I'm really, really friggin' nervous. Um, I'm gonna wet the floors down. I'm gonna start spraying. I'm not gonna stop and uh, talk to the camera anymore because I just need to work. I need to think. I need to uh, make sure that this is gonna look right because the worst thing that we can end up with is some big stripes or big lines where the metallic is kind of falling down or uh, you know double coating the wrong door. I just really need to take my time with this and make sure it looks mint. Now the paint that I've chosen is a single stage, meaning that there's no clear coat that goes over the top of it. The main reason I have gone this route is because of budget. This paint is about half the price of a typical base coat, clear coat setup, but the trade-off for single stage is that it's not as forgiving as the base clear. The only way I'm gonna get this super glossy is to spray it on wet, but if I go too wet, I'll end up with runs. If I go too slow and dry, it'll look really bumpy and it won't gloss. Also, because I've added a pearl into this paint, there's a pretty high chance of modeling or grouping of the pearls, meaning that there could be stripes or cloudy parts to the paint. If this happens, there's no real way to fix it besides to sand it off and start again. So the consequence is really high. Once again, you can see I started with all the edges, corners and door jams, then I moved on to the roof. And because single stage covers so well, I'm only going to do two coats. I'm spraying a medium wet for the first coat so the paint will sit flat and it covers good. And then I'm onto the second and last coat. Now this is the stressful part, spraying it wet enough to gloss without getting runs and orange peel, as well as making sure those pearls are sitting right. Now the only way to do this is by overlapping at 70% and keeping a consistent wet edge. If you are thinking about painting your full drive, I'd highly suggest starting with a two stage paint, but if you are on a budget, a single stage without a pearl would also be a good option. Now you can see here the final results are super glossy and uh, super flat. I'm very happy with how this paint laid out overall. I can see under the light, the metallics are also sitting quite nice, which is good. So overall, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Oh boys, this thing is finally painted after a whole month of waiting and it looks so good. I'm so happy with the color choice. It is popping right now. This single stage is just clearing off. It is uh, gonna get a little bit better than this. It is gonna flash off over time and uh, boys, she's gonna look mint. I don't even know what to say. I'm freaking blown away with this color. Now spraying that on was a little bit of a mission because we had to get it super wet to get that glossy effect. But as you can see, you can already see my reflection in there and uh, that is glossy enough for me, boys. I probably could go ahead and cut and polish this, but because it's got a pearl in it, I'm just gonna leave it alone because it's a single stage. On the last coat, I just added the red uh, flake here, which is in this tin. So some red pearl, added that in and uh, shot the last coat super wet. And that's how she's turned out. So, I don't know if you guys can see the uh, pearl in there. That kind of shows you a little bit, but uh, she's definitely gonna pop in the sun, I think. The hardest part about this was the bonnet. Now, I did get uh, a super wet coat on it just then, but before it was a little bit orange peely, so I had to go back and recoat it, and you can see the reflection in there. It's already super glossy, so that seemed to have worked. We've got the grill up there. Everything is looking good. I've demasked it, wiped down the engine bay a bit so you can get the full effect of how she looks. I am so happy 
with that color choice. It is very unique. I can't think of anyone else that has this sort of color on their car. On the camera, it's looking like super red in person. It's a little bit purpley, a little bit uh, maroonish, but I think we'll call this car Ron Burgundy. Don't know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments if you think that's a good name, but yeah, I am high on fumes, high on paint and I'm freaking stoked that that is over. You see by the minute, she is just glossing up more and more. I'm very happy with the results. I'll give you guys a quick little walk around. I really think adding those two pearls has helped with the uh, color on this thing a lot. I think when we get this out in the sun, it's gonna look really, really nice. I'm actually surprised how glossy it is for straight off the gun and I got it pretty flat, which means that we've just put on like a lot of heavy wet coats. Now, it's obviously a bit of a trade-off. The heavier you go, the more chance there is of runs and runs are really annoying to fix. Yeah, I definitely recommend checking out some YouTube videos. There's a bloke named Paint Society. If you are painting, he's got um, a lot of really great helpful videos, but yeah, I'm not gonna get too much into how to paint your car because there's not many people that actually wanna paint their car and I don't recommend doing it because the job absolutely sucks. Let's talk about price to see if this is even viable for you to do it at home. I basically have bought primer, we've got the color, we've also got all the additives that you add into the color and we've got a bit of pearl. Now all up, I've spent about $650 alone just on paint. Then you've got sanding pads, you've got uh, gun wash, stuff like that on top of that. I'm gonna estimate a single stage paint similar to what I've just done at around about the 800 to thousand dollar mark, including everything like your sanding pads, the whole lot. Just off the quotes I was getting, if you were to do a base coat and a clear coat, then you'd be up around the 1500 to $2,000 range. And there's a lot more prep involved in doing base coat as well, which is something to note because the prep does take freaking ages. As for prep though, I think we've done pretty good and a uh, massive thank you to dad. You can see we've got these panels quite flat. I mean, there is a ding there, just ignore that. Now also, this back corner that we did repair that is looking good as well you can't really tell that there is any bog in that at all so it honestly has turned out really good if you ask me i'm really happy with the color i was going to go a very boring just gray like we did on coal but i'm really glad that we've done something a little bit different and this is very unique it's actually that unique that i'm probably not going to be able to imitate it if we um hit a panel or something so yeah completely custom color on the old gq but I think it turned out good and I'm very happy. Probably don't expect another episode next week off me because I have to clean this whole shed up, get the car organized to um, get it out. We've got to also paint the flares as well so I can bolt the flares back on because I will be color matching them. We've got rubbers, door handles, everything to put back on. I will be filming that, but it probably won't happen next weekend just because I'm going to have to clear all this out. Catch you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Not next week, but the week after. Catch you then.